Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rajita Vanga. Today's topic is on development of veins in the upper body. To understand today's topic, uh, I hope you might have seen the previous video on development of heart and heart tube and parts of heart tube. So if you happen to see that, this topic would be easier for you. So let's begin with today's topic. So here is the sagittal view of embryo. Uh, showing the placenta on one side this is the placenta and we can see the umbilical cord containing umbilical veins and arteries so the left umbilical vein carries the oxygenated blood towards the heart so which is red in color and here is the dorsal iota which is purple in color because it contains mixed blood both oxygenated and deoxygenated blood and here is the head fold of embryo and this is the cardiogenic area containing the heart tube. Uh, the heart tube uh, in previous session you might have seen the parts of heart tube. So the cranial end of the heart tube is the arterial end and caudal end is the venous end of the heart tube. So this is the heart tube with the dilatations you can see. And the venous end we can see several veins draining into the heart tube. We can see the umbilical vein also. Before draining into the heart tube they form fluxes of veins here which are present within septum transversum those are the hepatic fluxes and here is the arterial end, end of the heart tube we can see the arterial end is connected to the dorsal iota by various aortic arch arteries so these are the one two and three pits are seen here and even the fourth one so these are all the aortic arch arteries connecting the ventral iota from dorsal iota so and this is the yolk sac and yolk sac is supplied by vitelline vessels so this is the vitelline arteries and these are the vitelline veins draining the yolk sac and lastly the cardinal veins along with the dorsal iota the cardinal veins which drain the body wall and they have several segmental veins the small veins you can see are arising all over the cardinal veins which are the segmental veins so these are the cardinal veins the upper one is the anterior cardinal vein the caudal one is the posterior cardinal vein and we can see the common cardinal vein as well so the venous system develops from three three sets of veins that are vitelline veins umbilical veins and cardinal veins which drain into sinus venosus of the heart that is the venous end of the heart so we can see the venous end of the heart where all veins are draining so vitelline veins mainly drain the uh, yolk sac so they return poorly oxygenated blood from the yolk sac and uh, right vein from the uh, uh, right vein uh, forms the hepatic that is the right vitelline vein there are all pairs right and left vitelline right and left cardinal veins and umbilical veins also right and left umbilical veins so here only left umbilical vein have shown because right umbilical vein completely degenerates. So coming to first vitelline veins, I said they return poorly oxygenated blood from the yolk sac and right vein forms the hepatic veins and sinusoids, ductus venosus which later forms ligamentum venosum in adults and hepatic portal, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric veins and also the splenic veins and part of inferior vena cava so they are all derived from vitelline veins next about the umbilical veins umbilical veins carry well oxygenated blood from the placenta the right vein degenerates during early development and left vein forms the ligamentum teres hepatis so that is about the cardinal vein so the right vein degenerates during early development the left vein which is patent during fetal life and in after birth it turns to form ligamentum teres hepatis. Then cardinal veins, lastly the cardinal veins. So the cardinal veins return poorly oxygenated blood from the body of the embryo that is the, from the body wall of the embryo. So there are anterior cardinal, posterior cardinal and common cardinal veins. Anterior cardinal veins forms the internal jugular vein and superior vena cava and posterior cardinal vein forms a part of inferior vena cava and common iliac veins 
and there are veins called subcardinal and supracardinal veins uh, which we will better understanding along with the development of inferior vena cava so subcardinal veins forms inferior vena cava and renal veins and gonadal veins supracardinal veins forms the inferior vena cava again and intercostal veins azygous and hemiazygous veins so these three systems that is vitelline veins cardinal veins and umbilical veins uh, can be recognized in this image and uh, so vitelline veins uh, form uh, develops into portal system vitelline means they are mainly associated with the gastrointestinal tract and cardinal uh, system forms the caval system that is the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava and veins associated with these veins which drain into these veins also develop from the cardinal veins and the umbilical system which degenerates after birth but before birth only left umbilical vein is patent and which carry well rich oxygenated blood so this is a basic introduction about the venous system and three sets of major veins so let's begin today's session with the development of upper part veins of the upper part of the body so now let us understand the veins of the upper part of the body so here is the schematic image so this is the venous end of the heart this is the venous end of the heart here is the right horn of sinus venosus this is the left horn of sinus venosus which are continuing to form common cardinal veins so this is the right side of the cardinal veins this is the left side of the cardinal veins and here is the common cardinal this is the right common cardinal vein and this one will be the left common cardinal veins and the one which are cephalic or cranial they are called anterior set so anterior cardinal veins so this is the right anterior cardinal vein and the one which are caudal are the posterior so this is the right anterior cardinal vein this is the left anterior cardinal vein similarly we have got the right posterior cardinal vein and left posterior cardinal vein on the caudal side and there is a communicating channel communicating the both anterior cardinal veins right and left anterior cardinal veins are communicated by means of this communicating channel which is an oblique uh, communicating channel and we can see the opening of subclavian veins on each side which are basically from the intersegmental veins so the cardinal venous system that is the cardinal veins are now we can divide into anterior cardinal veins so these are the anterior cardinal veins posterior cardinal veins right and left posterior cardinal veins and common cardinal veins right and left common cardinal veins so this uh, venous system common cardinal veins that drain the head and the body of the embryo uh, functions usually during late third and early fourth weeks it starts functioning from late third and early fourth weeks of the uh, gestation and the major veins of the upper part of the body are the internal jugular vein subclavian veins right and left brachiocephalic vein uh, superior vena cava which are and all are discussed in this uh, session so today i'm going to discuss the development of these veins so starting with the development of internal jugular vein so here this is after changes happening to form the adult veins so this one is the right side so these are the right cardinal veins which later derive these are the left side here we know this is the right atrium which opening into the right and left horn of sinus venosus so first we are going to discuss about the internal jugular vein so internal jugular vein uh, basically it uh, derives uh, develops from the anterior cardinal veins cephalic to the opening of subclavian vein so we know this is the opening of subclavian veins on each side right and left subclavian so cephalic means this part opening of subclavian from the anterior cardinal veins derived to form right jugular on the right side and the left internal jugular on the left side so right internal jugular vein develops from the cranial to the opening of right subclavian vein 
cranial to the opening of left subclavian vein is the left internal jugular vein. Next about the subclavian. Subclavian vein it develops in the region of upper limb bud by the enlargement of intersegmental veins in this region. So, subclavian vein is a, uh, develops from the intersegmental vein which further uh, continues in the upper limb. It uh, we know it drains uh, uh, from the upper limb as ax brachial vein which continues as axillary, axillary continues as subclavian veins. Next about the brachiocephalic, right brachiocephalic and left brachiocephalic vein. So, first we shall begin with the right brachiocephalic, it develops from the right anterior cardinal vein about the opening of oblique communicating channel and below the opening of right subclavian veins from here to here about to the opening this is the opening of right subclavian this is the oblique channel this part from here to here it forms the right brachiocephalic vein next about the left brachiocephalic vein left brachiocephalic vein it develops from the oblique channel connecting the left and right anterior cardinal veins and also the left anterior cardinal vein between the opening of the communicating channel and the left subclavian vein. So, this is the oblique vein. So, this one oblique communicating channel and also between the opening of this and the opening of left subclavian. This whole thing from here to here will form the left brachiocephalic vein. So, the right is here, this is the right brachiocephalic, this one will form the left brachiocephalic vein. So, left brachiocephalic vein, I repeat again, it is from the communicating channel, communicating between the two anterior cardinal veins and also the opening of the communicating channel till the opening of left subclavian vein. So, till the opening of left subclavian, this whole thing will form left brachiocephalic channel. Uh, vein. Next development of superior vena cava which is very important. So, superior vena cava is developed from the right anterior cardinal veins. So, this is the right anterior cardinal vein this part and also from the right common cardinal. So, this is the right common cardinal vein so, uh, which forms the which opens into the right horn of sinus venosus. So, this is superior vena cava. So, here is the superior vena cava. Just show from here. It is from the anterior cardinal, right anterior cardinal veins, caudal to the opening of oblique anastomosis, including the common cardinal, right common cardinal vein. So, all this will form uh, superior vena cava. Next uh, about uh, the uh, right horn of sinus venosus forms the part of right atrium. The superior vena cava opens into the right atrium of heart. Developmentally superior vena cava consists of uh, two parts, first part and second part. First part develops from the right anterior. So, the right anterior part, this part will form the first part of superior vena cava and the second part develops from the right common cardinals. This is the second part which form, which is derived from the right common cardinal vein. And as the right common cardinal vein opens into the right horn of sinus venosus, the superior vena cava at first opens into the right horn of sinus venosus. Later the sinus venosus gets absorbed into the right atrium and forms the posterior wall of right atrium. As and when the anterior horn that is the right horn of sinus venosus is absorbed into the right atrium, the superior vena cava finally opens into the right atrium. So, let us talk about the other veins as well, what happening on the left side. So, as most of the blood is shunted from left uh, to right during fetal life. So, the changes occur because of the blood shunts from left to right. So, part of the left anterior cardinal vein below the transverse anastomos obliterates. So, anterior cardinal vein below it, it will get start anastomosing. 
anastomosis and obliterates the most of the left uh, posterior cardinal vein will also regress so left posterior cardinal vein you can see the left posterior cardinal vein also regresses compared to the right side you can see it gets regressed and finally they all join to form left posterior intercostal vein so this form forms the left posterior intercostal vein and we can see uh, the left horn of sinus venosus also regresses we can see the left horn of sinus venosus also regresses and it gets regressed to form coronary sinus so the left common cardinal vein obliterates and as its uh, lateral part and uh, forms oblique vein of the left atrium it gets obliterates and uh, left common cardinal vein and it results in the formation of oblique vein of Marshall which is the oblique vein of left atrium while its medial part contributes in the formation of coronary sinus and external jugular veins develop as separate channels they develop as uh, separate channels so this completes uh, major veins of upper part of the body which are draining into the superior vena cava and uh, that is draining into the right atrium via the superior vena cava on the left side we know uh, it forms left uh, common cardinal vein the medial part forms the coronary sinus and lateral part forms the oblique vein of Marshall and the left cardinal vein this is the left anterior and posterior cardinal veins they get regressed and they get anastomosis to form posterior intercostal left posterior intercostal veins so this is all about the development of venous system of upper part of the body so here is the left superior vena cava so thus the anterior cardinal veins on uh, that is uh, it occurs when the anastomosis does develop between the two anterior cardinal veins but the blood is shunted from right to left through a uh, brachiocephalic vein so as a result the right anterior cardinal vein below the oblique uh, transverse anastomosis it regresses and the left cardinal vein develop into superior vena cava and left cardinal vein instead of opening into the right atrium directly it opens first into the coronary sinus coronary sinus where it opens into the right atrium of heart via the coronary sinus so these two are the important anomalies associated with the development of superior vena cava so this completes the development of veins of upper part of the body thank you